Hi, I'm Toby and welcome to another episode of The Joys of Mathematics. If this is your first time watching, then here's your chance to go and grab a notepad and pen so you can work along at home. And if you are a return viewer, thanks for coming back. Now, today we're going to work through something that's a little more abstract in its creation, and we're going to do this to hopefully see that sometimes you can't always trust something on its first impression. Sometimes you need to look a little bit closer because often things are not as they seem. So keep in mind that this piece today is going to be more of an abstract artwork than a conventional one. So I've got my trusty titanium white colour here and let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to let A equal B. A and B are our first two characters and they are variables. They could be anything that they ever wanted to be. They have the whole world as their oyster. But today A and B have chosen to be exactly the same thing. Now as we go along don't be afraid of the mathematics here. I'm here with you and I'm going to help you go through it. Well, what we're going to do is times both sides by B. That will give us A times B is equal to B times itself, B squared. So we've added a couple of happy little Bs here to this line. We added Bs to both sides, so that's fine. We can add or multiply whatever we want, as long as we do it on each side. Same with division and subtraction. You know, there's a moral of the story here, only do to others what you want done to yourself. And when you've got two sides of an equation, anything you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Now, let's add some more happy little Bs. And in fact, we're going to add another B squared to each side of this equation. All right, got a lot of happy little b's. Let's just simplify this. b squared plus b squared could just be written as 2b squared. And this line or the side stays the same. Now you might be sort of wondering how this is going to end up anywhere, but just trust me, sometimes you need to just go where the wind blows you. And it is pretty windy out here in the garden today. I hope that doesn't cause too many issues, but Let's just follow along with the drift of the wind here, and you might just have to trust me a little bit. Okay, we've added b squareds. What if we do, we've got an a, b. What if we subtract the same term from both sides, and that term is going to be 2a, b. All right, let's do it to both sides. This term that I subtracted from both sides could have been literally anything since I did it to both sides and it's going to make the result the same. But up until now, we haven't done anything illegal with our algebra. This is all, this is all fine. Okay, so if we have one AB and we're taking away two ABs, how many ABs do we have left? Well, the answer is we'll still have our B squared and minus one AB. And on this side, we've got 2b squared minus 2ab. All right, what I want to do next is to factorize this line, and I'm going to continue up here to do that. So there's one common term to both sides, and that is b squared minus ab. On this side, we could take a 1 out of the bracket if we really wanted to. It's somewhat unnecessary. But we have 1 times b squared minus ab. And that is equal to, well, we can take a 2 outside the brackets now. 2 times b squared minus ab. Getting a little close to the edge there, but I think we're all right. OK, so now we've got this line still. Nothing illegal has happened. You want to check my algebra, you can go through there. But now we have something. All right, we have b squared minus ab on both sides of the equation. What we, we may want to do is to recognize that if we divide both sides by the same thing, that's all right. Like we can divide both sides by b squared minus ab, and that would be the same as canceling out this term. 
If we'd cancelled out this term in brackets, then what we have left with is that 1 is equal to 2. Now, here's where it appears to be pretty abstract, and in fact, something doesn't quite add up here. I'm going to put a little box of shame around this, because this means we've done something weird or something illegal along the way. We can't just suddenly have 1 being equal to 2, because that would fundamentally change so many things about mathematics. We rely on 2 being exactly double 1 and not being equal to each other. So have a little look at the algebra and see if you can identify where we went wrong and why. Don't worry if you can't get it, I'm going to show you in just a second. But if you've formed your opinion, then let's have a look. I stand by that all of this algebra is correct. The issue comes in at this line here. Now, we divided both sides by b squared minus ab, and that would be fine as long as b squared minus ab, the stuff in brackets, was not equal to zero. If the stuff was equal to zero, this would amount to dividing both sides by zero. And as you might know, Dividing by zero is kind of forbidden in mathematics. The answer to that is undefined. When you start dividing by zero, things in the universe stop making much sense. You could already sort of argue that the world doesn't make a lot of sense to us. You know, good things happen to bad people all the time and there's a lot of things that are unexplained. But right here, this would give us some weird things. Dividing by zero leads to all sorts of things such as that one is equal to two. And frankly, this is nonsense, so we need to sort this out. So let's have a look. b squared, since a and b are equal to each other, is actually the same as a times b. So this in brackets is in fact equal to zero. And what we have on this line up here is that one times zero is equal to two times zero. Now, I mean, sure, anything times zero is going to be equal to zero. So these one and two, could have been replaced by literally anything. All this really shows is that zero is equal to zero. So if we've proved anything, that's what we've proved here, not that one is equal to two. So there is a bit of a moral here, and it was to not trust your first impressions all the time. You know, when we did this step, it might have looked like it was legal, and this might have looked like a legal result. But we used our sort of critical thinking, we realized it probably doesn't make sense and there's probably a reason why. So the rule for mathematics is that whenever you're going to divide by something, check that that something is not zero. But also in life, you know, sometimes things are too good or too weird to be true. So always look a little closer and don't just take things at face value. Now I'm gonna rub this off here and make room for a little message. A duster can get pretty chalky, so you just beat the devil out of it. This episode of The Joys of Mathematics is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare are an online learning community with classes in things like business, design and technology. I'm currently working through some courses on writing short stories and editing videos in Final Cut. If you want to learn new skills, then as a special offer for my viewers, the first 500 people to sign up for Skillshare at the link in the description will get two months of unlimited access for free. That's access to over 20,000 courses, so I'm sure you can find one there that you like. This is also your personal invitation to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Don't forget to take a closer look at the world around you. And from the bottom of my heart, I hope that you have an absolutely mathematical day. Here's some bonus after the credits footage, but I just wanted to show you guys something in the garden. It's over here. And it's a moth, or a butterfly, perched on a little branch there. Now that's pretty nice, but don't look too close past him or you might see what scared me earlier. Seems to be a spider. I'll zoom in because I don't want to get too close. Um, it's either the spider or like the skin of a spider. But to be honest, I didn't know that spiders had skins, so I'm getting out of here.